Caesar Clown is often named as one of the prime candidates as a possible next straw hat. And while I believe that he in theory fulfills the basic requirements for this, I think his character actually serves a completely different purpose in the story after all. There aren't all too many parallels to draw between The Lord of the Rings and One Piece, two of my all-time favorite works of fiction. One thing, however, that both of these worlds undoubtedly share is their seeming disregard and even distaste for science and scientific advancement in their epic world building. Now, while there clearly is some scientific progress in both worlds, it tends to be associated with military power, destruction, and an overall threat to the vast beauty and pureness of a world where strength, courage, and will determine one's success in battle, and where the heroes strive to forge a path to peace and freedom. After all, we don't want to see a world where Aragorn drives around in a corvette ordering drone strikes on Mordor. In The Lord of the Rings, the best example for stark technological and industrial progress is Saruman, whose ambitious undertakings to wage war go hand in hand with the destruction of the environment that, in the end, fights back against him. And bringing this all the way back to One Piece, the face of science and technical advancement in One Piece is of course none other than Dr. Vegapunk. Yes, it's without any doubt the biggest tragedy of Caesar's character, that even as the archetypical mad scientist type of antagonist, he's not the dominant face of science in One Piece. His arc is arguably the most insignificant after the time skip, and his battle with the Straw Hats was not exactly what you call a close call. And still, Caesar has stuck around for four consecutive arcs in the story, going from Punk Hazard over Dressrosa and Zoe, all the way to Whole Cake Island, traveling together with the crew and developing his very own dynamic with Luffy and Co, until he finally was free to go his own way after the events of the wedding. It's no real wonder then, that similar to characters like Momo or Vivi, Caesar for the longest time was a top contender for the next spot on the Sunny. And while I strongly believe that Caesar wouldn't be a great fit for the crew at all, as we'll see over the course of this video, I also think that people who straight out disregarded this as an unrealistic option have overlooked some crucial aspects of his character. Because Caesar, in fact, fulfills a number of general qualifications that are strongly associated with being a straw hat. Having a quirk, a dream, and a tragic backstory. And now, if you're shaking your head at this, let me convince you otherwise. Oh, yeah, and before we get into it, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to hit that big red button below this video. Gangsta. I think we don't have to say too much about Caesar being the sort of quirky addition to the crew that Luffy loves to make. His strange appearances, his Logia devil fruit, as well as his socially awkward personality undoubtedly would make him a great fit among a talking skeleton, a pervy cyborg, and a cadney loving reindeer. So I think we can definitely cross this one off the list. What about the tragic backstory then? <laughs> Here, it might already be less obvious for some people. However, as we will explore in more detail later on, Caesar does indeed have a tragic backstory. It's undeniable that he's actually a quite intelligent and academically capable person that has dedicated his entire life to science and research. And yet, despite all that, he's still outshone by Vegapunk for what is basically his entire professional life. There seems to be nothing that he can surpass him in, and he suffers heavily 
on the disregard that people have for him, always in the shadow of this other brilliant scientist that is creating technology 500 years ahead of the current age. Given his psychopathic and apathetic personality that is yearning for attention and recognition, I think we can pretty safely assume that Caesar probably didn't exactly have the most fun childhood as well. This is also where the theme of Julius Caesar comes into play, who obviously served as a namesake for the character and might hint at some sort of betrayal happening in his past. And so, while it might not compare to the likes of Robin or Brooke, I think that Caesar's life and past can definitely be crossed off as tragic. So what about the infamous dream that every new straw hat needs? Surely O'Hara isn't proposing that Caesar has a dream. And also, why is O'Hara referring to himself in the third person? <laughs> Now, this speech here that Caesar holds in front of his men, whose demise and suffering he caused himself, is obviously meant to be pretense. We know that Caesar, in fact, doesn't care about his men one bit, and that he was the one who launched a horrendous explosion on the island and not Vegapunk. However, I think there are parts in this speech that might very well be honest, regardless of whether Caesar is aware of that himself or not. He clearly does want to actually surpass Vegapunk and wishes for more attention. And so I personally believe that the part where he talks about his dream to bring peace to the world through science might very well be true as well, or at least was true at some point in time. I think it's not too far-fetched then that Caesar's passion for science didn't start with the minority complex towards Vegapunk right from the start, but with the amazement and joy of experimenting. A young boy with the hopes of making the world a better place and losing his path along the way. I think there is quite a strong argument for this dream to be the truth. <laughs> So, clearly, the argument that Caesar might become a member of the crew is not completely empty. With a quirky and interesting character, a tragic past, and an unfulfilled and seemingly unachievable dream, Caesar certainly could fit into the ranks of the Straw Hats. So, what then makes me so certain that he won't ever join the crew? Caesar, in many ways, is a quite straightforward character, fulfilling the typical trope of the mad scientist that doesn't shy away from unethical methods to satisfy his urge for discovery. In close connection with his gas devil food powers, he's a quite toxic and at the same time elusive character. In many ways, he is literally all hot air, relying on trickery and more powerful people than him for protection. Nonetheless, his genius is real, and despite his hedonistic lifestyle, he's the only one able to produce the chemical SAD for Doflamingo's artificial devil fruits, and thus is a priceless asset for both Dofi and Kaido. For this reason, Doflamingo even threatened Monet with death if she let anything happen to Caesar and made it a priority to retrieve Caesar upon his defeat. The true reason why Caesar can never be a straw hat, however, lies in the rarely mentioned, but in my opinion, most important qualification for any straw hat, being fundamentally changed by Luffy. All of the current Straw Hats, without one single exception, have been influenced by Luffy and have had a significant change of heart or turnaround in their life upon meeting him. Luffy literally changed all their lives to the better. In other words, all members of the crew have a positive character arc that ends on a high note when officially joining the crew. And Caesar simply doesn't have that. Despite traveling with Luffy for so long, his character arc is undeniably flat. Yeah. 
as any well-written character, he does have a fundamental lie about the world that he believes in. That he is a better scientist than Vegapunk, unfairly looked down upon and thus compelled to beat him at everything he does. Clearly, this is not true. As is shown over and over again, Vegapunk seems to be the better scientist. Momo's artificial devil fruit was better than any of the smiles. The numbers are way better than any of Caesar's attempts of gigantification. And there was a reason that he wanted to get his hands on Frankie and the laser that Vegapunk had developed. And yet, despite being confronted with this truth through his encounters with Luffy, he never stops for even a second to consider that he might use his intelligence in other ways to follow his dream. That he's actually holding himself back with his obsession with Vegapunk. Oda put him in the exact same spot as the other Straw Hats, giving him a real chance to develop. But he never does. <laughs> Now, this is of course not necessarily bad writing, but a conscious decision of character design. But in my eyes, and I would say probably also in Oda's, it fundamentally disqualifies him as a future straw hat. And so, if Caesar's purpose is not to join the crew, what is? <laughs> Caesar's character serves a number of important purposes in the story. He goes from a light version of Hisoka, whose video by the way will be coming soon, to Buggy over the course of Punk Hazard, adding a comedic element to the Straw Hat's more and more serious journey into the new world. <laughs> Oda sacrifices a lot of his character's potential during Punk Hazard for setting up the bigger fish during the Yonko saga. As a result, Caesar is introduced as a supplier for Doflamingo, Big Mom, and Kaido alike, pointing towards the increasingly intense arcs that will follow Punk Hazard. Doflamingo in particular steals his show by arriving on the island in person, threatening to take over the entire arc if not for Aokiji's interference. As a result, Caesar's role in the story is reduced to a setup villain that serves as a measuring stick for the true threats yet to come. Is his character useless then? Did Oda ruin the potential he had? Honestly, I would say a bit, yeah. Caesar could have been way more interesting as a villain, especially if Punk Hazard had been a little bit more condensed. However, I think that the real message behind his character is something completely different that often gets lost under all these other layers. <laughs> Drawing the line all the way back to the beginning of this video, I believe that Caesar, despite his inferiority to Vegapunk, is supposed to represent the face of science and technological advancement in One Piece. In a world where pirates sail on boats from island to island, fighting with swords and shooting cannons, there suddenly is laser technology and biochemical weapons of mass destruction. Something that seemingly doesn't fit into the world building at all and disturbs the adventure like world we're exploring. And while Oda repeatedly hints that before the Void Century, science might have been way more advanced and possibly even used for the good. At this point in time, it is mainly used for military purposes, bringing an unfair advantage into battles that are otherwise decided through willpower, strength, and the use of mythical devil fruits. Caesar, as one of the leading scientific forces, sets off a chemical weapon on Punk Hazard, killing or crippling most of its inhabitants and destroying its environment, selling or creating weapons of mass destruction, 
for similarly unscrupulous individuals such as Del Flamingo, performs sick experiments on children and drugs them with a lethal, addictive drug to ensure that they do not run away, and ultimately tries to murder everyone on Punk Hazard again so he could test out his new weapon pet Smiley. All of which he does without so much as a shred of remorse or empathy for his potential victims. And leading into the current Wano arc, he's also responsible for the creation of the mutative artificial Smile Devil Fruits that either turn the users into grotesque hybrid creatures or condemns them to a life unable to show any other emotion than laughter. <laughs> With this, I think that Oda paints a quite dark picture of science through Caesar's character, emphasizing the adventure and freedom aspect of a more simple and untouched world filled with exotic places that have to be explored by ship. <laughs> And in addition to that, Caesar also leaves us with two very interesting options for Dr. Vegapunk, who dismissed him as his assistant due to his unethical behavior that is one of the most heatedly discussed issues to this day. Is Vegapunk good or bad? Given the hints that we've gotten from Oda so far, it seems that Vegapunk is secretly helping the revolutionaries and even passing some passive aid to the Straw Hats. However, I think that there is a quite notable chance that Vegapunk might actually be the true evil genius of the story that is way more ruthless and unethical than Caesar, as he's the one responsible for all those horrendous experimentations in the first place that Caesar is trying to imitate, not even mentioning the work he conducted together with Judge Winsmoke. <laughs> And so, even though he's often not put at first place by people when it comes to science and industrial progress in the story, Caesar undoubtedly introduces us to countless important concepts and insights about the role that technology plays in the story. And thus, I think that Caesar is a quite unique and important character in the story that hasn't been used to its full potential. Oda has teased as readers with the quite real possibility that he might become the next Straw Hat, but in the end made it quite clear, I think, that you can't join the crew without correcting the path you walk on first. Ironically enough, Luffy is able to open the eyes of Caesar's protector in the next arc that follows. And so, if you want to learn the true meaning of the birdcage for Doflamingo, make sure to check out his video here. Thanks guys. Peace.